And we're joined by Professor Ramon Maramon, who is the coordinator of the New Horizon 2020 project, ADAMU, a dynamic economic and monetary union. Professor, the nature of the Eurozone, did the nature of the Eurozone make this crisis inevitable? And if not, what was the main thing we got wrong about the Eurozone? Well, I think that now it's understood that when we started, first of all, I mean, the Eurozone as such has been a big step okay, for many countries. Even the countries had gone through the crisis. Okay? I'm from Spain, I live in Italy. But those countries has been certainly a, a move a, a, to move a van, a, in advance. However, there was this feeling that by just satisfying the basic criteria and having the join a unique uh, currency, that meant convergence immediately. Okay? Well, that's proved not to be the case. There were many elements that one could have realized that that was not the case, because we have historically developed quite differently. Was it foreseeable? Excuse me? Was this crisis foreseeable? Did people, was it predictable? Some aspects, yes. Okay, some aspects, yes. Others, not. Okay, for example, the people didn't pay much of attention as economists to all the movements of the current account that close countries, okay? So it seemed like a natural thing to have a lot of capital moving from the north to the south. But at the same time, a lot of this was done in this period of low interest rates, like in Spain, just to have a, a boom, a housing boom, okay? Which wasn't called for. So some of these elements were cleared already in, in the 2006, 2007, before the financial crisis in the States. Then, I don't think that uh, we, we has been reaction, but the reaction was not as, as clear and strong. And in particular, and in particular, we still behave uh, from the policy perspective with this idea that we are all basically the same. Well, that's not true, okay? This doesn't mean that you should not have a, a monetary union. I think we should, okay? But how do, how do you sell that now? Obviously, the reputation of the monetary union has been damaged a lot. How, how, can, it, how can it recover? And how can you tell people this is something that's really worth clinging on to? Well, uh, I'm not so sure that the reputation is uh, so questioned. Because if you look, for example, something that has worked amazingly well has been the European Central Bank. We had not had any major crisis of the currencies, which they could have happened in other situations. We had, maybe they could have started earlier, but we had uh, an intervention which has been uh, really helpful, given that there were not other financial instruments. So we had these things. Uh, you could have said, well, if we had not had it, maybe people had not borrowed so much. Or maybe, but on the other hand, that was because they got the credibility mm -hmm. to do that, no? Yeah. So I don't think that's so much a, in question. What may be question is that certainly we need a little better structure. That doesn't mean we need a lot of structure. We just need things. And in particular, you see what, you see, if you put yourself in the year turn of the century, when we start with the euro as such, okay, year 2000, 2002, at that time we had the Lisbon process, okay, everyone saying they will do a big reforms. Well, in the good years, many of these countries they didn't do them, okay. So, and this is for Greece, for Italy, for Spain, for Portugal. So all these countries, they didn't do some of the things that others, Nordic countries, for example, did, or Germany did, okay? So, I don't think that one can blame it on the union itself. Most, most people would say that the euro hasn't worked well, I think, at this point. Well, to say this, one is the counterfactual, meaning that we will have been something much better. And I have my serious doubts. But this isn't what we hope for. I mean, you, you can't use a bank in Greece at the moment. This is... No, of course. We never expect that we'll arrive to a situation like this. But we also never expect probably that things will be so mismanaged. And mismanagement is all this case for everyone. I think that has been more on the Greek side. I think that something that has not worked, it has been, that has been too easy from the perspective of the countries to blame it on others. As it's always easy to blame it on others, okay? Mm. I mean, had been with the crisis many broken promises. 
that part of this broken promise is because we're unfeasible promises about pensions that a country could not afford, about uh, some security that was not there, about uh, so some things, and instead of many times recognize, well, maybe we should have not done these promises, since we borrow for them, then we just blame it on the guy who gives us the money. Well, that's a little funny, no? One can say maybe the guys who give us the money, the lenders, they have been a little too eager to get it back with the high interest rates. Well, yeah, there is something of that too, all right? But, uh, again, I don't think that the one to blame is the union itself. Although, politically, this has helped a lot. Okay, so of course, it's much easier to always say, oh yeah, no, it's, we will not do that, it will be the others. And this has happened. Even the cases that has been a turnaround and someone committed political suicide, like Zapatero in Spain, the argument was, well, Europe make us do that. Uh, that's not the best way people understand that you should have done the homework yourself. Mm. So then all this is confusion on both sides. Mm. So there has been a lot of confusion in this crisis that a lot of that could have been avoided. And now we have been in a better position. So tell me a bit about your uh, research, the insight you hope to gain from it, and um, your, your um, ambitions with the project. Well, the research is precisely about these different aspects of understanding how you design better the institutions and the policies. On one hand, to look at the more long run, okay, in terms of sustainability. This means in some things, some reforms need to be taken more into account. One, I mean, one thing that we do with other methods is to look at a little more historical data. Mm. And then you see, for example, how problems of productivity, this divergence has been even before the monetary union, okay? And then you want to see, well, what needs to be done in that dimension. Or, for example, we, now we are forced to do a lot of coordinations of policy, even in the fiscal side. So you want to study precisely how much of a fiscal union you need. Maybe we don't need a lot, but we need more, okay? For example, we need to have better system of resharing. We do have the stability mechanism, but this is like, as is defined as something for crisis. So it's like in the health policy that we only had, uh, when we look at the patients only when they're in the extreme position, okay? In the intensive unit, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so we don't design a health plan just by having intensive unit care. We plan having basic health care. And that's the same thing for resharing. Now immediately the thing comes up. And this was even the be before the Euro, before all this. Uh, Hayek was saying a long time ago, well, this project of Europe is not going to go because it's going to be a transfer union. And people at one point will get tired of uh, making transfers. And that's a serious and concern, and a fair one. But then you have to design like, how you do. You certainly need some level of trust and solidarity. And on this, we have not learned too much, okay? So we need, we need more. But you still have to have a good design to do this. Well, but that piece is not there. Mm. It is supposedly in the plan of the four and the five presidents. Okay? But the question is, you need good theorists also to do it, to design it, to design how you do this. So that's aspects that we work. You work a lot also about, or plan to work, okay, that's things that we are working, about all these uh, relationships that have with different policies, spillovers between different countries. Mm -hmm. So how you take advantage of the positive ones and how to avoid the negative ones. All these issues have a lot to do with credibility, as it had happened now with the Greek crisis. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to say, oh, we put the fiscal compact in the constitution, no. You need to really build up trust, build up responsibility, and with enough flexibility. It's very difficult to have flexibility if there is not commitment that people will carry on. Otherwise, when everyone gets suspicious that you take advantage of this flexibility to turn around and say, well, a little more, a little more, a little more, it's like a kid that never learned. Well, maybe we should learn about how to enforce these things. Mm. Yeah? And maybe the way that we were doing, just 
this has been not the best one because we build up, build up, build up to arrive to a major crisis. That's not a very good way to go. But this is the same thing that thinking in the financial system. Sometimes we live with this vision that we can avoid all the risk, okay? And then we always will save the banks. Well, that's probably not the best way because risk builds up, builds up, builds up, and eventually goes to the ECB. That's not a very good design. That's why you chose the word dynamic, because it has to be a reactive monetary Exactly, unit. because you want to understand these aspects, which are dynamic, which have to do about promises, about expectations, too. And and I know this with the models, and we put them in the computer, and we see what we get out of this, and so on. So that's how it goes. Well, Professor Ramon Mermon, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.